Now, we're going to bring you a special perspective guest on the uh, programme today. And my guest is here in Paris for a very special reason, in fact. James K. Boyce is to be jointly awarded a major new prize for his groundbreaking work in the field of social and environmental inequalities. Now, inequality, of course, a major issue of our time. The Global Inequality Research Award aims to recognise researchers who've made a, a significant contribution to the understanding of the problems. James K. Boyce is an author naturalist and a leading worldwide scholar of political economy and climate policy and he joins me here on set thanks very much for coming in and talking to us congratulations first well of all, thank you very much and thank award. you for having me yeah you were saying it's amazing that there is an award for such a thing tell us a, a bit about what it is because a part of the process day you're going to present aren't you an overview of your of your work it's about structuring the field of environmental political economy what does that actually mean in layman's terms right well i guess you know, the starting point is to understand that the key insight of economists who work on inequality is that what really matters is not simply what, but also who. Uh, what matters is not simply the total size of the economic pie, but also how it's distributed, who gets what. Uh, what matters in analyzing a specific economic activity is not merely the total costs and total benefits, but who bears those costs, who receives those benefits. So this will probably strike most viewers as not a particularly remarkable insight, but what is remarkable, I'd say, is the extent to which during the 20th century, many economists forgot it, mm -hmm. and they didn't pay attention to these questions of who. And uh, is that why there is such a discrepancy between people who are so poor and those who are so rich? I wouldn't say it's the reason, but it's the reason why economists neglected that for so long. And what is really remarkable now is that this issue is right at center stage, and it turns out there's even a new prize uh, for work on this topic. Mm. So what I specifically did was try to apply that um, question to analyzing the environment, analyzing our impacts on the environment. So when we're looking at problems of pollution, when we're looking at problems of natural resource depletion, we can ask not only what's happening, you know, what are the costs and benefits associated with activity, but also who is deriving benefits from these activities if nobody was benefiting by despoiling the environment, it wouldn't be happening. Who bears the costs from those activities? If nobody was being harmed from the standpoint of most economists, it wouldn't be a concern. And finally, why is it that those who benefit, who, who are benefiting either through more profits or cheaper consumer goods from these activities, why is it that they're able to impose those costs on other people? So those are my sort of entry points for trying to look at this question. And presumably it's a problem that's getting worse and worse and worse as climate change continues and the environment is being attacked, if that's the right word, more and more. It's, more, it's almost an exponential problem. Yeah, I would say that climate change really has helped to bring this issue to center stage. I mean, it's always, it's, it's always been there. Uh, and in certain respects, uh, I'd say environmental problems were even worse 100 years ago in terms of the numbers of people dying from air pollution, for example, uh, before we had environmental protection agencies. Uh, but climate change certainly adds a new and frightening element uh, to the mix. And so, you know, the basic uh, problem then is if we're thinking about this in terms of the dynamics of the interaction between those who are benefiting and those who are being harmed, we realize that in order to change um, what's happening in the environmental space, in order to protect the world's climate, in order to protect natural resources, in order to protect people, we have to pay attention not only to technical issues like how we produce energy or whatever, but also to the balance of power in society between those who are benefiting and those who are bearing the cost. And if there's a tremendous imbalance, if there's tremendous inequality between these people, then it becomes much harder to solve the environmental problems. I mean, presumably the answer at the moment is that, yes, there is this terrible imbalance, and that's what the problem is. But how do you 
reduce that? How do you go back the other way? Ah, that, well, if I had the answer to that question, I'd be doing more than winning a prize for doing <laughs> research on this topic. But I would say, you know, in the, in the big picture, uh, the answer is to bring together the, the challenges of protecting the environment and protecting people and building a more um, equitable distribution of wealth and power in the world. And those two need to go hand in hand. So for example, if we're thinking about addressing climate change, one of the prescriptions that you will often find uh, economists making is that we need to put a price on carbon so that it's no longer ignored in people's decisions about how to invest and how to consume. Um, the problem, of course, is that if you put a price on carbon, you're going to raise the cost of living for ordinary people, working people, uh, an issue that has been very much visible here in France in the last five years or so. And so you need to find a way to do that that will, on the one hand, address the environmental problem, and on the other hand, not exacerbate inequality, not hit the people who are struggling hardest to make a living. There are ways to do that. One can, it's, it's a solvable problem, but it's a problem that you need to pay attention to or you won't um, actually achieve success in either task, actually. You've written a lot of articles and books as well. Um, the last uh, book was on the trail of capital flight from Africa. It investigates the dynamics of capital flight from Angola, uh, Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire and South Africa. Countries that have kind of witnessed large scale illicit financial flows of money yeah. out of their yeah. countries. Yeah. How and why has that occurred and is that related to this as well? Oh, it's interesting you bring that up. Yeah, that's been another major arena of my work um, in my career as an economist. And I would say, uh, A, it's a very widespread problem indeed. It's not just those three countries. We're talking about massive outflows of money from some of the poorest countries in the world, poorest in terms of the living standards of the majority of the population, not in terms of their natural resources. Um, but B, yes, there's a connection because there too we see a situation in which imba huge imbalances of wealth and power allow a relatively small um, privileged uh, minority elite to extract resources from uh, the African continent um, to benefit themselves, but at the expense of everybody else. And often that not only involves taking money out and hiding it in so-called safe havens abroad, including, I would have to say, the United States uh, is one of those safe havens, but also uh, it involves despoiling the environment in Africa. So we get, you know, mining operations, oil drilling operations, uh, deforestation. Um, all of these environmental problems are another cost of allowing this kind of disparity to continue and allowing um, those on the top to, to make, make hay while the sun shines and feather their nests at the expense of their own societies and indeed at the expense of the entire world because many of these environmental problems are global in their impact, not just local. Certainly seems like, sounds like uh, essential work. Thanks very much for coming in and talking to us today. That's uh, James K. Boyce, author, naturalist and leading worldwide scholar of political economy and uh, climate policy. I think we can say that. Congratulations. Once Thank you for having me. Good to have you with us on the programme today.